Well, welcome back. Here we are outside the motorhome, uh, parked next to our home here, and we're going to take a look and see where the best location for our charge controller and our cable routing from the roof down to the compartment where we're going to install this and see how well everything will fit. Okay, so this is the compartment we're going to actually install the charge controller and bring down the cables from the roof into this compartment. This compartment currently has the slide out control, it has the jack level control, and uh, it also has a uh, cam lock control for the slide room since this is a single slide room coach and full wall slide. But this does fit into the location I had selected, but it's a little tight and uh, it's going to be difficult to run the cables in here, but I think it'll work. Okay, here's a, a little bit better view and close up of what you can see in this compartment. Here we have the, in the back, you can see the inverter and the inverter junction box just before that, and then the uh, disconnect switch. And then where I'm planning on putting the battery controller, and then as you move over, you can see the uh, slide room controller and the battery control center. So I'm going to move the, or pull the cables from the back of this through a cable raceway that's behind these compartments that I have open here and see the feed-throughs into that raceway from the back of the battery compartment. I'll have to get to it in the back. I want to put the battery temperature sensor for the charge controller on here. Here's my the two six volt batteries here. And then I'm planning on coming up into this compartment, and this is my AC panel here, and then this comes out, and it covers a lot of uh, ratchetness of electronics, or, or excuse me, cabling. This covers a lot of the cabling to for the AC and DC, and uh, switches, panel light panel switches and stuff. So I'm going to come into here with our leads, and then up in the upper section here, and this is where the electronic control is for the awning, and I'm going to essentially come up through the ceiling and down to this compartment and follow all the way down and then to the component. So that's my current plan. I think I'll clean that up and put some tie wraps and Make it a little more presentable in there. Okay, so I have some cardboard templates of the solar panels, and I want to lay them out here to get an idea where things are going to go. After reviewing the roof and any pass throughs down through the coach, which I was hoping to have a refrigerator pass through, but I do not, so I ordered a feed through cover uh, to go there and I'm thinking of the two solar panels here and I wanted to bring this up and make sure that we had room for them here which it looks like we do I could probably put one up between the antennas here it's a possibility now, my only other question is, should I plan on the third panel being up front there? I really want to stay away from any shade, so the third panel up front would probably be the best place. I'll put one right here, and the other two. So I think that's what I'll do. Let's see what I've got here. I've got ten feet. I 
about 40 inches to go there as well. Now that we have our solar panel location determined on the roof, let's go back down to the ground and run our solar panel wiring from the entryway compartment and the battery compartment to the charge controller compartment. So the cables are coming out through the floor in the cabinet above and I'm going to run them along this raceway up to the compartment where you can see the propane tank, it's above the propane tank down there where I'm installing the component, the, the solar charger. And so I'm going to follow it down and then go into that compartment there. Okay. So this is the coach battery compartment. It has two 6 volt batteries, as you can see. And uh, between the two of them are creating the 12 volts. I'm going to install the temperature sensor and I'll probably epoxy it to side of the battery here just to uh, epoxy with a light amount so that it can be easily removed when the batteries are replaced. And then I'm running it through this little opening here, this grommeted, and then down into the raceway and up to the compartment where the solar charger will be. Okay, after several days of bad weather and celebrate the New Year's holiday, we're down in my hometown of Casa Grande, Arizona to finish the installation of the solar panels. Since getting the panels up on the roof is a two-man job, I'm at my dad's home to gain his help and advice in completing the job. Okay, so we lift, hoisted the panels up here and after we put the feet on them, and uh, you can see you know, the shade there a little bit, you can see the zippy feet and uh, we're going to do a pilot hole through into the rib and uh, make sure that it's a metal rib I'm going into, which I think it is. And then I'm going to bring all the cables underneath the center one here and uh, then bring it to the one side where I'll tie wrap to the feet so that if I have to replace the fuses, the fuse will be accessible from the right hand side of these panels. So we're coming up, I'll probably run over alongside the air conditioner and up onto the panels there and then put uh, a wide four inch wide tape over the cables as they go up under the panels here. After drilling some pilot holes trying to locate the aluminum roof ribs and screw the zippy feet into them, it just wasn't working. So a different mounting plan was needed. We decided an inch and a quarter aluminum angle glued to the roof and screwed into the ribs that we did locate would be better. Then we could mount the zippy feet to the aluminum angle and that would allow us also to remove them at a later date if we need to get under them. Yeah, I got to do that at the same time. Take the end off to feed it through the grommets of the feed through. Hand me that grommet screw on you got there. And so I need to put a new one on. a new negative on. Again we had to do this because of our feed through and take the ends off that came with them originally. 
Let's see, I think I had a female here. This is the female one. And so we're going to crimp it on. Easier again to put it in the crimper and then put your wire in. Okay. Here's our mail connector. Nice seal there. Okay. Where you want to start at? Right here as close as you can? Yeah, I think so. Let's see how much of Oh, that's all I got. Yeah. That's why I say you might want to go that way a little bit more. Because it'll, it'll hold it here. Well, I got some I can cut off the other end. Huh? Off the other piece. Because I'm going to put another piece between the edge of the suit in there. So what are you saying? So I got a piece I can cut here probably. Oh, oh okay. So let's do what you suggest to me. Okay, want me to start it? How do you, you peel this off like this? I don't think so. You peel it back underneath. Go ahead and pull it more. Underneath more. Okay, spin such or so. Together. Okay, so this is the completed installation. You can see my roof feed through here with the rubber tape sealing the cables off. And on the other side of the air conditioner, the connections under the central panel. You can see the rails that we ended up mounting the panels too that are glued and bolted to the roof here you can see the charge controller in the battery control center compartment I have the connections temperature going to the batteries with a epoxy sensor on the side of the battery. The leads from the photovoltaic system coming from the roof and the connections to the battery. And that's connected to the inverter in the back through the inverter disconnect switch to the batteries. With the solar charge controller connected and powered up, you can now go through the LCD displays on its front panel. Use the down arrow and move through each display. Review the included user guide, which explains the indications and icons showing the status. One of the nice features about this particular charge controller is it does have Bluetooth connections so you can download an app from the Android App Store and connect the charge controller to change the settings, monitor your solar panels, and review the recorded history the controller collects. In the Android App Store, search for the app with the letters S, R, N, E, and this will display an icon shown in the screen capture. Select it and install the app. 
Once installed, open the app within 50 feet of the charge controller and you should be able to see its name appear in the available devices. The controller will connect to the device after you select Confirm. After a short pause, the app will identify the controller model number, the version, and the serial number code. You can now use the app to monitor the system status. You can use the record function, i.e. data logger, to monitor the charge, the discharge, and many other parameters. In this screenshot, dated the 17th of January, you can see that my system has been running for 13 days and has charged my batteries full charge 17 times. You can monitor the total generation amount and here is showing me uh, 7.489 kilowatts even though my RV has just been sitting without being used. Well there you have it. I hope you found something useful in these videos, especially if you plan to install your own solar system. It's been interesting doing the install and trying to create a video at the same time. I found I definitely have some learning to do. Overall, I'm very pleased with this new system and can't wait to get out in the boondocks and see how well it works for us. Total cost is about $450 for the components and cabling and about another $200 for all the parts and pieces necessary to mount it. Thanks for viewing my video and I wish you best of luck installing your own solar power RV system.